Your podcast mentor this week is Sherry Mills, co-founder and chief visionary officer at Tree Goat Media, Inc. slash Marvel. Sherry has a background as an artist who made her way into the podcast industry as a creator. She quickly came across some key issues that she is working to solve with Marvel. We'll get into topics like discoverability, humanizing tech, and mastering your craft in today's episode. Let's listen in. Hi. Hi, Marla. How are you today? Oh, so great. So, um, so happy that you could join us today. Um, what I like to do is always start with my first basic question, which is, what is your name, your company, and your title? Sure. My name is Sherry Mills. My company is Tree Goat Media, our first product being Marble, and my title is co-founder and chief visionary officer. So how are you feeling today? How am I feeling? Um, I'm feeling the mixture of things I generally do on a daily basis, running a startup. So a little bit of roller coaster. Uh, honestly, right before this call, I had to like find a way to get back into my you know, positive, yes, I can communicate space because of, you know, a little tension, something that happened. That's just the norm. So I kind of try to use all of these things as opportunities for growth, which a startup is a tremendous opportunity for growth. So that's my honest answer. Yeah, my moods go up and down and up and down the entire day. So I got it. Um, so what is the first podcast that you ever listened to? Do you recall? Uh, actually, it was Startup uh, from Gimlet. I don't know. Are you familiar with that? that no, tell show? me about it. Um, it was essentially the making of their podcast production uh, company. So um, they brought you through all of what it was to build that from a startup level. He would even have potential investors come on, even deny them funding, you know, all of these interesting little like things that went on in his marriage that were tense because of the tensions of building a startup. So essentially, I, I started my experience in podcasting kind of around startup building, I guess. So I guess it made sense to start there. So what are you listening to right now? What's your favorite podcast? That's a great question. Um, the show You Are Not So Smart um, kind of has me at the moment. Um, but the way, I, the way I approach my listening with podcasting is very much based on topics of the moment that I'm diving in to get information around, which I'm sure that's a major use case for a lot of people, right? But um, so, you know, when I got into Beyond the Startup uh, episode, when I really started to get into researching podcasts and exploring them more, was in the development of Marble, where I was prototyping and doing topic segmentation on episodes. So I'd go into shows like 99% Invisible and Radio Lab and WTF and Stuff You Should Know. And I just started really prototyping from those episodes. But in terms of like what I like to listen to, it's very based on the moment. So um like I, I need to learn. I need to learn more about preferred stocks. The other day, for um, and and an, an investor, like getting back to an investor with the help of my CFO and co-founder. So I went and found a couple great episodes from different podcasts around preferred stock. While I'm walking the beach, I listen to them. I get what I need. I go back. I do my work. So that's kind of how I generally um, yeah. listen I'm to podcasts. I'm not sure that I would have. I would choose that particular <laughs> podcast to. Yeah. But I totally get it. You know, it's a, it's a very, very need based. So is there anything that you've listened to um, that strikes you as particularly like super creative? I really I, the show Invisibilia, when I when I started listening to that, that got me um, just because of how they mix like science and storytelling. And I loved like the kind of intimacy quality of how they would bring voices of their subjects into their edit um, I, I just found it really thought provoking. I just thought, so that, that's a show I love. I mean, really any show that, that is really about keeping that creative or innovative spark alive, like tends to get me, um, and shows about human behavior, um, and how, how we're shaped. So, um, my, my friend Lauren Lagrasso's show, Unleash Your Inner Creative, you know, I like her show also because it's about the creative process and, you know, keeping, keeping it alive, <laughs> which I think is really important. I'm going to yeah. check that one out. Yeah, yeah. please do. Yeah, that's great. So you happen to be, for people who don't know, a wonderful artist, um, and you ventured into the podcasting space. Um, 
do you see any, what overlaps do you see, if any, between being the artist or artistry and podcasting? It's mm, a great question. Um, yeah, I, well, a, a little background on on me as an artist, I guess, you know, I'll, I'll say I, I moved to New York when I was 20, um, was really into abstract painting, uh, didn't have a, a place to do it. So it was about whether I wanted to live in a small room, like a, a walk-in closet in Weehawken is actually where I lived for a period of time. Couldn't have my turpentines there. So I fell in love with the camera for the reason that this abstract expressionism could be captured from the walls, the sidewalks. I found like a lot of satisfaction in that um, finding that perspective is really what could set us free or imprison us. So you could be in an urban environment, you know, even look at something on like a splash on the sidewalk of like a milkshake and it could be this ecstatic, incredible moment of shape and form, right? So I'm saying that because I think that perspective shifting and, um, you know, opening up your mind essentially to like a, a more beautiful reality is ever present for us. And podcasting to me is so much about that. I see like this treasure trove of millions of episodes where a lot of the primary intent inside of a podcast is to shift perspective to open perspective, right? So when you know, a lot of people ask me like, how did you go from visual art and you're showing your work and you're, you know, I was really on that track of like building a fine art career. Um, how are you in the tech space? And I say, because of those parallels, I see, you know, what we're really building as something that can enhance and infuse more perspectives and really start to like organize, organize the voices of the world um, to, to really enlighten the world as much as possible, which is already happening. I just want to enhance that and facilitate it to happen faster. <laughs> so we're going to talk about Marble in a minute, but um, as a creative, um, what challenges have you faced as you entered or entered into the podcast industry? Because it, it, I see similarities, but you know, it's a little different. Yeah. Um, I guess. And I, I always think of from like the startup, just business scenario, as well as being in the podcasting industry. But um, honestly, I'm, I'm an introverted person. Um, and so one thing about all of this work has just been having to break out of my comfort zone of uh, being quiet, being behind the scenes, kind of, I really love to focus and have a fair amount of solitude in a day. So just honestly opening me up to more interaction and more, you know, human relationship development on a daily basis, and then managing my energy in order to maintain doing that, I would say has been a challenge. Um, and I'm, you know, a very sensitive, emotional kind of person. <laughs> so learning, um, more emotional boundaries, uh, backbone, ability to navigate in those shifty waters on a daily basis with more groundedness, definitely been uh, something I've been working with and through. Um, the As far as like podcasters and the space, that provides a little bit of levity and that the area in which I'm working is filled with people with incredible voices and things to say. And, you know, it's not like I'm dealing with the stock exchange or something, you know, so like, I appreciate that very much. So let's talk about Marble. So for the purposes of our listeners, what is Marble? Marble is a technology. So we use machine learning to extract interesting moments out of podcasts and then deliver them to users. So we call them marbles. Marbles are like tiny extracts from podcasts that have audio and the captioning um, combined in a composite. And you can find them through search or recommendation. So um, in a way, if you think about Google Alerts, it's something of that. Uh, so if you say you wanted to learn more about, you know, women's basketball, PTSD, llama farming, anything, inside of our app, you'd be able to set those terms as collections. And then whenever those things are spoken about and marbles are created, they'd flow into your collections. So essentially, you can create these very personalized feeds based on topics, people, places, things, and shift them up all the time. And a show, a pocket show could also be a collection. So all the marbles that flow out of that show could be easily accessible. So, um, you know, it's it's also every marble can be shared to virtually any platform. You know, we're not building ourselves as a walled garden. We actually have a lot of interest in going into the B2B space and integrating with players, you know, building our API web platform. We're much more interested in becoming a technology that the whole industry could utilize. Um, 
so, um, but anyway, on, on ter- in terms of the sharing to any platform and, and what our break apart allows for, it's like those days of here's an episode, go to time code 1311, where they talk about squirrels, you know, is gone. Like you could literally just go get the squirrels, send the squirrels by text or Twitter, or Instagram, TikTok, any place you want to send them. And I, I always talk animals. I always bring in these animal examples. My team knows that I talk Dalmatians and birch trees and whatnot a lot with my examples. Sure. But you know, <laughs> anim- animals in nature come in a lot. It's the Vermonter in me, I guess. So what problem do you think Marble is solving for the industry? It's definitely cutting the time down to get to the content you want to listen to dramatically, right? There's still, uh, we're still at 25 to 35% drop off rate in the first five minutes of a listen on an episode, right? You're dealing with this long form. I wonder if that would be, you know, 90% of that episode would have been listened to if the person felt confident that the topic they were searching for, they were going to get to, which it probably was in there somewhere. They didn't have the patience together. So that's, that's a major thing. And then um, as far as the way we partition and break apart and really categorize these smaller units of information, it allows for a different form of monetization to come into the space as well, which could very much support podcasters to have a rev stream that is outside of the traditional um, current like host read or, you know, interstitial. Yeah. So I definitely want to talk about the monetization piece. Um, But so essentially it's an app, right? So if I'm interested in this, I download the app and what kind of information do you ask me for? Yeah, so we're in private beta right now with iOS, and we will have also Android when we launch in the store. Um, and we can talk later for anyone who wants access how they could get it. Um, so we ha- we're working now with like a limited stable of content. So we have partnerships with the Investors Podcast Network, Podcast One, and the Podglomerate for right now for houses, and then a stable of indies. And we're really looking to build more with indies for this beta. Period. So when you go into the app, you'd be presented with um, kind of new marbles from new shows in different categories, as well as a for you section. So, you know, we start to recommend marble feeds based on how we come to know you as a user and based on your behaviors in the app. And then, of course, you'd be able to set collections very easily, visit your collections page. So you can, you know, it's, it's we've, we've gone through a lot of iterations with this app and we just recently pivoted and essentially really slimmed it down. It was getting too feature heavy to socialization heavy, you know, and so we just got it down to the core basic thing that we want Marvel to do really well, which is to deliver, um, you know, bits of information that are extremely relevant based on topics. So that's kind of what it will present. So tell me, what's the origin story? Where did this come from? I mean, it's a cool idea. I mean, we've talked before. So yeah, if you could talk about the genesis of the idea. Yeah, yeah, I'll try to be as brief as I can on this one. Um, so I, you know, mentioned was a, you know, and am an artist. Um, and this project that I put together called A Closer New York, based on the photography I was I was speaking of, um, there's a company called Metro Media Technologies that took a liking in my work and sponsored events and my outdoor shows and brought me to clear channel relationships. So I had billboards around the city, that kind of thing. And a new CEO stepped in who happened to be my now business partner, Mike Kakianis. And we completely hit it off. I was representing their outdoor and the arts program. Um, and that's just how, you know, our, our engagement started. Um, he was just a fan of my work. He was, you know, a mentor of mine. He had 30 years in radio, which I also didn't know at the time. That was his background. Um, and so what happened was I, you know, I went through a pretty terrible breakup experience with a, a long-term partner and um, was doing a lot of, you know, spoken word poetry and kind of finding my way into audio. But I had this vision for making a, a site that would support primarily women that went through betrayal experiences with, through creative tools to like find their way through the healing process a little faster. Um, and I, I put together an advisory board of all the people who'd supported my career. And I asked Mike to be on my advisory board. I wrote what was something of a manifesto uh, for, for this site. And he said, this is a radio show. And that's what really planted the seed for me to consider audio. So I met with some of his contacts at CBS and Sirius and whatever. They said, make a pilot. I started to work on the podcast and then Metro Media was sold. Mike was on his own. 
he said, you're now developing the podcast space. I radio, let's put our heads together to see, you know, what's missing in the industry. You know, like, what is it? And we realized it wasn't content. There's a surplus of content, right? Ever expanding content. So we saw, huh, like the, the distribution system for this content needs to be developed. And that's really where we got excited. So I started to look at my own work, started to partition it based on topic change and started to see that in a full length episode, there really were a lot of these topical change areas. If I were to apply some interesting visualization to those segments, now I'd have this whole array of social shareable units. This could help me actually grow this thing, you know. And and then so Mike and I thought, what if, right, we could automate the process of this topic segmentation? If we could prove that that could be done through AI, that would be the foundation upon which we could really make change happen and, you know, enhance search and whatnot. So we started researching companies um, that specialized in AI and machine learning, landed on one in Serbia. And then for about a year or more, I was going back and forth there and working for two or three year periods of time with our engineers and this team of, of seven labelers. So humans that were essentially taking what I had developed for segmentation and analyzing audio. And we built an algorithm from that that was effective in this topic segmentation. So then this was COVID was setting in. We, you know, I stopped taking flights to Serbia, you know, and we started to form a product team here. Um, we're now about 20 people. And so that was when we started to build like the app as a proof of concept and everything that has come since. So uh, that's a, <laughs> the long story of how Marble got started. I guess it's been a long journey. But, you know, one thing is Mike and I were very uncompromising about one thing, which is that we needed to get this to um, an effective automation stage and not let it remain a tool. Like, you know, there are great tools like Headliner, you can break up content, right? And you can post it. And there's so much you can do. I mean, so many podcasters make their own audiograms. and But we wanted to remove the labor piece as much as possible so that podcasters wouldn't have to do any work. It could be optional, like how they interact with it, but that they could still receive the benefit of increased traffic without. So we kind of, there are a number of times where people said, look, you could just make a tool. You've got all the tech here to just roll this into a tool. You know, we're like, no, 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 this has got to be something that, um, you know, is, is out of that category as much as possible. So that's kind of why it's taken us the time it's taken us. So, you, you know, you, we, we've been talking about AI machine learning, and we're about to um, integrate that technology in the app that we've been building. And what do you say to creators who are hesitant that they may feel that it takes away a human element? I mean, I see the benefit from a creative perspective. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I say the good news is that everything that we're using AI for is to just extract the human voice of the creator and their guests. So the form that's created is simply just part of the podcast. So in that case, the the intimacy or the human quality is maintained because it is essentially them speaking. Sure, the, like the quality of how, how well does it start? How well does it end? Does it feel interrupted or strangely cut? Like all those things that then you might start thinking, oh yeah, that's AI. It's AI done poorly. So they're, you know, we're, we're doing pretty well there and we'll continue to get stronger, like as humans interact with the marbles. But overall, I think like that, um, that intimacy quality is maintained just by the nature of us not summarizing, not compositing, not doing anything weird other than just extracting, you know, um, I guess that, you know, there are no human robots, there are no robot voices, you know, <laughs> nothing like that. So um, as we've talked um, at ASA, a, a key focus of ours is um, financially empowering our women and non-binary podcast creators. It's super important to us. So can you talk about the monetization piece of Marble? Because I'll, you know, that I'm always, my ears perk up when I hear about yet a potential other way that podcasters can monetize. If you could talk about Yes, that. yes, absolutely. Um, so, you know, we're still pre-monetization because we are focused on, you know, user growth and developing our, our partnerships. And in order to get there, we really do have to develop a lot that way. But because of the way our tech works, there really are some exciting opportunities for monetization. Um, if you think of, of AdWords, you know, we're, we're working on something called Marble Words. So, um, 
because of our transcription and named entity recognition and this categorization and segmentation that allows for all these small bits, like I was saying, to be essentially attached with sponsors where they couldn't be before. So if you imagine like you could be in a business podcast and there could be this funny aside about going to the garden and picking tomatoes. And for some reason it's, it's funny, it's humorous, whatever it is, it becomes a marble, right? So now maybe Hello Fre- Fresh, right, would want to sponsor a feed that is about clean eating or clean lifestyle for which that tomato marble has now made the feed, right? So it's kind of like what my vision for marble is that essentially anything you have to say that's of value could find the right home or the right audience so that there's less um, concern about, well, what are, are we shifting topic? Are we going off topic? I mean, granted, you don't want to destroy the the beautiful creative like edit and storyline. But at the same time, it could mean that a lot of treasure that's essentially not really monetizable now could find a new way to be monetized. So um, that's, and and I think new advertisers that currently aren't in the space, you know, you've got a lot of your primaries in there that, you know, you know you've got like Amazon and I mean, so many of them, but I, I see um, new ones coming into the fold because of that nature of AdWords. Like you could have a productivity feed of marbles and maybe Dunkin' Donuts wants to be involved or maybe Marvel wants to be involved with superhero conversations, you know? So there's so much you could um, ways. Yeah. So, I mean, a, a, a rev share program for all of our partners, absolutely is something we're going to build. It's just a matter of time. And that is like one of the ways that we're seeing, but we, you know, there are a lot of things that we could do. So we're just in the workshop about it, you know, because <laughs> like we're, we, we have to get users first, you know, <laughs> so. We'll talk further. I yeah. mean, um, I'm always looking and thinking about how we can make more money um, for our, our creators. So I think this it's is essential. Terrific. Yeah. Yeah. It really is great. So um, tell me about or tell us about goat. I'm looking here. Goat tree goat media and how marble fits into the overall. Mix. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to make sure I got the name of the company right. So. Yeah, I know. It's, it is it is a little confusing at the moment. Yeah, Tree Goat Media uh, was the name of the LLC and now the, you know, corporation that Mike and I formed. And um, so it is the parent company. Marble is our first, you know, baby, as it were. Um, we could go on to build other things. We'll see what happens. Um, Tree Goat came about uh, <laughs> in part because of, well, my husband was involved in that, who does graphic design and, and brand concept work. And I kind of gave him the task at the time of just figuring out what we wanted to call our LLC. And he's really good at coming up with that. And he saw a picture of those goats in the trees of Morocco, you know, that make argon oil. And it was just such a, it is an incredible sight to see a tree filled with goats. I mean, it's unusual. So that, and, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a double Capricorn. So I've got a lot of goat in in me and Mike, my business partner is Cypriot, you know, Greek. And, you know, so all about, you know, goats. I mean, we made that connection. We thought it was funny. And so we're like, okay, we're about, we're about goats, goats and trees. They're essentially going where you don't think they would go. Right. So as a concept for a company, that's our hope is like audio can go where you don't think it can go. It can reach places that you don't think it will reach. Right. So, um, and, and, and marble, Marble, you know, we feel makes sense as the the brand for this product we've been talking about because it is so much about color and small bits and this idea of like, you know, community coming together to play something to interchange elements. It's one of the oldest games of humanity. You know, it's been found in you know, the ancient Egypt and um, you know, and 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 I mean, if I could get a little philosophical, you know, I think you know, this time that we're in of like eco chambers is, is really a problem, you know, and this reinforcing of points of view and hardening of them just ends up becoming very divisive and very black and white in terms of the way we look at things and see things. And so, um, you know, I think everything's really in that shade of gray area, or I like to say like between black and white are all the colors, right. And you really need to be able to, um, communicate with those different shades of perspective, right. Um, and so marble is kind of like, that's where the branding kind of makes sense. One of the most interesting branding stories I've ever heard. So thank you. I'm very creative. I mean, <laughs> because when we were coming up the name of our company, I always go to Greek mythology or mythology first. Um, so that's how we came up with Asa. But I love the way you put the pieces together. Um, I think it's just really an interesting story. So thank you. 
Thank you. Yeah, my husband was involved in that too. So I'll, t- I'll tell good Johnny. Job, good job for him. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's do a little crystal ball kind of thing. Um, any predictions or theories about the um, trajectory of the industry? I mean, I used to say five years, but that's ridiculous in the podcast <laughs> world. Um, Two days. So- <laughs> yeah, what is- let's say within the next year, year or so. Yeah. Um, any thoughts? Um, I would say like, I mean, and maybe I'm kind of biased because of the way I'm always looking at things like through the filter of marble development and whatnot. But, um, I see almost like a coalescing of like, there are all these different talk audio forms, right? There's podcasts, there are Twitter spaces, self records, recorded events. It's, they're all over the place. Right. And I think, I mean, that's fine, but I think that the idea of like, um, preciousness or allegiance to any one of them, um, may kind of minimize to just are looking at where's the quality and relevance in the spoken word in general, which would require a delivery system to make sense of all those bits, you know, like, so that it really can get formalized as a a medium that is understood in a more mainstream sense, if that makes sense. Um, And I think a search functionality that'd be able to serve as the backbone of that is essential. So I see like an advancement in, in audio search. Absolutely. And, um, and yeah, something of something of I guess I think in terms of collage, I see all of these different elements, and I want to see them make sense as a whole, you know, it, for whatever that means. <laughs> so it's interesting because um, when I think about podcasting, we do advertising and we do it via host rate ads, and that plus all the research that's coming out talking about the the emotional engagement between the listener and the host. To me, that I haven't figured out where to take that going forward, but I think that's such a unique part of podcasting. Um, so yeah, we should brainstorm. But th- I yeah, mean, absolutely, there that yeah. I think can make the relationship and the spoken word um, even more unique. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is yet. It's like I, I feel you though. No, I do. I feel you. I that was. I mean, one thing that really got me about the medium from the beginning is just, you know, like even they called radio, like the companionship model, right? I mean, the fact that even radio is still around, even though podcasting is allowed for, you know, delivery of content whenever you want on any device. It, it's it's for the same reason, I think, that you, you fall in love with the people that become like your friends, your companions, like hosts literally become part of your life. I mean, you know, and so that, that will never go away. I think so long as humans maintain any semblance of <laughs> reality and empathy and whatever, you're going to want that companion, uh, that model won't dissolve. So yeah, it's, it is a really interesting challenge where we're in this world of try to get me right to the content that I want, but also we got to balance that with give things time and space, let yourself enter things in a deep focused way with the person that you want to hear from. So like, I don't really see a dissolve of that. I just wonder, it's just somehow like a refinement of the way all these pieces fit together to be effective, but still maintain that human connection that it's rich with, you know, as a medium. Yeah, I love that. So what's next for you? <laughs> Which I know is Marvel, but talk about sort of what's next, what, you know, specifically yeah. getting out of the private beta mode, whatever, if you could talk about that. Yeah, yeah. So um, we're definitely excited about bringing um, content on and indies on and, and really working with them to get feedback also to be sure that the, the benefits that we're rolling out with really, really service them. So I've been meeting one on one with with a number of, of indies. We've been getting the RSS feeds registered, looking at their marbles. Um, very excited to, to keep going that way. We're also um, meeting with potential like B2B partners to understand what could be the first integration we create or pilot, you know, what do the features need to be for that based on all the tech we've built. Um, so that's something we're, we're certainly um, open to, you know, partners on, on, on the B2B side. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, built, you know, I, I guess the idea is to develop our footprint. You know, we really, you know, say in a couple years, would like to see our footprint be um, and from a brand awareness perspective, pr- very solid, you know, our rev program really working, um, and in and integrations with podcast players to the degree that we're really marbleizing the larger part of the content of the industry, you know, um, 
So there's a lot going on. <laughs> and of course, I'm working on securing more funding because that's, you know, we just opened a seed two round. So a lot of my day is, oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, I'm also just uh, doing a lot of emails and presentations and pitches and, you know, all that, all that other stuff that goes along with building. Uh, so there's never a dull moment. You know, I, I use the, I use the things app. I don't know if you're aware of that, that for organizing your to do's, but I, I live inside this app because <laughs> the to do's are overwhelming. Wait, it's called so things. Called? It's called things. <laughs> there's an app called things. Anyway, I guess I'm giving them a shout out. <laughs> Anyone All who right. needs to organize. Well, I'm go gonna, for it. Yeah. I'm going to check that out. Cause I tend to write on sheets of paper that get lost. So yeah, not a good thing. I used to have post-it notes all around my computer yeah. and it just got overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, hear ya. Um, so where can people find you? Yeah, so uh, if you're a podcaster and you're interested in, in joining our beta, we'd love to have you submit your show. You can go to marble.com, so that's M-A-R-B-Y-L.com. Uh, if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see a, you know, are you a podcaster link that takes you right to uh, a site, which is marble.com slash partners. So you could essentially just shortcut and, and go right there immediately if you'd like, and you can claim your show. Um, so once your RSS feed is registered, you'll definitely hear from us. And then when your show is marbleized, you'll hear from us. We'll be able to get you in the app to start, you know, seeing your work. And, and we're really excited to, um, you know, also to meet with podcasters and help them to understand how they can leverage our platform and our app, even in this early stage with their audiences. Um, and if you're not a podcaster, but you're just interested in, you know, trying out our app, you know, even in this private beta stage, um, you could DM me on Instagram and my handle is at Sherry Mills. That's S H E R R Y M I L L S. And we're letting a few people in every day. So I'll just be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Okay. Love this. And, um, this information will be in the show notes, but again, I wanted to make sure that our listeners had a chance to hear the location. So. I think what you're doing is amazing. It's very cool. Thank you, Marla. <laughs> Thank um, you. And, and I think what you're doing is amazing, by the way, because you're helping people to feel the confidence to keep committed to their voice and women specifically. And that's a very important role in this space. So yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you for doing what you're oh, doing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All righty. So again, thanks for your time. Thank you, Marla. Thanks for having me. It was wonderful.